Yo, what's up? It's Wizard Fu bringing you another update, making the game Wraithbinder. Multiplayer game where you get the death match and continue beyond death. So here we go. Working on the AI now. And uh, as you can see, I got this dogged AI following me around. Really doggedly. Can even pathfind correctly now. Um, for most of the last 24 hours, I, ha I was like really struggling with the pathfinding. And uh, finally got everything dialed in. So let me show you some of the code, the things that I fixed to get the Pathfinder to work. Uh, it's 3D. So you can see the whole arena is kind of uh, is sloped. It like slopes down to a certain angle. Or it slopes down to the center. makes this bowl area right here. Um, which creates kind of a bit of a trick for the, the Pathfinding. You have to use the right terrain height, basically. It's actually pretty simple if you think about it. You just use the right terrain height for the Z position of every one of your collision detections that goes on with the pathfinding when it when it checks the pathfinding is open. So um, that was the main issue and there was a lot of other little sub issues. Uh, for a while um, anybody that uh, was chasing me, I was if I would run around um, and with an AI ch chasing me, as soon as I went off the screen it would disappear and then it would be invisible all the way until <laughs> All the way until it started attacking me, and I was like, what the heck? Always these sneak up invisible attacks going on, and I finally figured out that was just due to the on-screen eids not being updated with an entity moves. So that was another issue, but let's check out uh, some of that code. Um, first of all, pathfind is open. This is a function that basically takes any given position in the path and the direction that it's heading in and the index of that path point and determines um, if that place is open, like if the if the pathfinding would succeed there, if you could actually walk on that uh, space. So um, the issue was that get reverse pause, which is takes the X and Y position in pathfinding coordinates and converts it back into world coordinates, which would be P. That's the variable, the output variable there. Um, get reverse pause was basically just reversing the pause from the collision system grid um, but really what it had to do also was add in that terrain's height so this is uh, adding in the terrain height so um, that's using the terrain grid uh, so that was a big thing that actually solved a lot of the issues with the pathfinding because before it wasn't using the correct z height it was using a z of zero or something random who the hell knows but um, now that that's fixed and it's using the right Z height and when all the collision detections actually work because this is three all purely 3D collisions. So if you have a Z that's zero and another one's a Z that's like 150, they're not even going to collide. Um, so that was important. Another thing that was kind of, a, this is kind of a quick little bug fix. Uh, um, at the very first starting point of the path, it uses the pathfinding entity's current position rather than reversing out the XY. That's because the, sometimes you're starting a path out where an entity is actually standing near something, near something it might collide with, and it's um, if you render it down to x y positions in the pathfinding coordinates, those pathfinding coordinates are a lot more or less granular, so they're you know they're big, they're like integer numbers versus floating point numbers. So um, using the exact position of the entity allows um, allows the the path to succeed at the very start point rather than it failing if they're standing near something that it might actually collide on. So that was also pretty simple. And then um, uh, also the updating the on screen. So there's this new method in render system called update on screen, and it basically just checks if it if it was on screen. And if it currently is on screen, and if it if that's different, then it updates itself. The uh, the on screen eids. The on screen eids is pretty important because those are required. It has to be inside this array. Uh, well, it's actually a map of eids um, for it to draw, for it to update, even for it to tick in the render system. So um, if an entity is currently off screen and you haven't moved the screen then and, and the entity sneaks back on screen then this function will handle it because in the move system move entity it now updates 
the on screen right there. If the position actually changes, then it updates itself. So that was that was solved the whole sneaking up on uh, sneaking up on your issue. So there you have it. Progress being made. My goal right now is basically to have um, I want to be able to feel how this whole game feels as soon as possible. This is basically a mock-up. Um, I'm trying not to care too much about what the arena really looks like. I really want to just see what the arena feels like, what the shape of it is, um, and how, how it feels. So what I'm trying to do is get an AI that's simple enough to pass for a player for now, right? Um, something. So I need to, I basically need to humanize it right now. There's a lot of like uh, just dogged roboticness that it has to its feeling right now. So I've got to like figure that out. So get it, get it to be a little bit more human. Um, and then, uh, and then see how this all feels put right now. I only have one AI in there cause it just makes things a lot more simple. Uh, but put in all of the players, all eight players, put them in the arena or this battlegrounds and see how they all do, right? Make them able to attack each other, kill each other. You can, they can actually kill You can kill each other right now. So there, yeah, you just killed me. You turned me into a wraith. That's why I'm this blue blob. Um, so yeah, see see how this all feels, right? Get the mechanics all working for this simple battle royale style, and uh, see how it's feeling before I go and and work on too much art. Um, I learned this whole technique uh, this um, winter when I was working on the um, when I had needed to take a break from the voxel engine and focus entirely on the mocking up the gameplay. I used 2D sprites, and it taught me a lot about focusing on gameplay uh before you really focus on art too much because sometimes you, you you make a piece of art that's not really necessary or you um because the gameplay changes later on or maybe you make a piece of art that needs to really be a lot better and you're not able to make it as good as you want it to until the gameplay is really feeling right so lessons learned time saved hopefully overall time saved on this project by learning these lessons and executing on them so there you have it uh that's it for this video thanks a lot for watching and we'll catch you next time